Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're located. I'm going to share my slide here for our agenda for today's webinar. We're going to have our introduction, training session, webinar instructions, Q&A, and next steps. So today we're going to be covering preparing for year end, and this is going to be a three-part series. Today is part one. And the training today will be with consultant partner Marie Liano. A little bit about her and her firm. She has been working with studio designer for over a decade, servicing users worldwide. Marie Vuitton is the rebranding of Marie's accounting firm, focusing on more content and training as the best way to maximize efforts and help business owners grow. Good morning, Marie, how are you? Can you hear me, Marie? Yes, I am. I was on mute. There you go. Good yeah. morning, everybody. Hi. No, no problem. I'm going to switch this over now to Marie's screen and we'll begin. Okay. Um, there we go. I'm hoping everybody can see my screen. Sarah, just cue me if um, for some reason you can't. Okay. Um, I'm not looking at the controls. Um, Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. I know that um, this is just a really hectic time of the year for all of us um, with the tax deadline. Sorry if I'm reminding any of you of that. Um, and then sales tax due just thereafter. So I just wanna jump right in. And for those of you who attended the last webinar, um, you know, you probably know that that was a really great topic. So I am gonna kind of skim through. I have added some additional things. Um, I will share some things on the screen. So if you have the ability to, uh, to uh, take a screenshot, please feel free to do so. Um, we also will have some of these downloadable on my website after the um, webinar, okay? So that being said, um, I like to really keep things as simple and basic as I possibly can when I'm teaching. And um, this is kind of what my project timeline outline looks like, right? If we were to break it down in three easy steps, we kind of just are, here with the new client, the project management phase where pretty much everything happens, and then the project closeout phase. But again, the project, clo project closeout phase, I feel is one that continually gets missed. It kind of it just walks over. We're like done with the project. I don't know, does anybody owe us any money? Do we owe anybody else money? And that's kind of the gist of it, right? Like, okay, you know, on to the next because we're usually rushing around or um, you know, with other ongoing projects in different phases, or we have something going on in our pipeline. Okay, so I um, am not gonna really harp too much about on, on this aspect of it, right? I, I do wanna point out, you know, what dictates to you when a project starts? Is it when, you know, you have this new prospect? Is it when, you know, um, you need to send them some info for me? Me personally, it is when the designer has the initial client meeting where they collect the, the retainer and get the client engagement letter and all that stuff signed. To me, that's the indication that a project is real. Like it's, it's something that we're gonna move forward on, right? And if you're not collecting a retainer, um, I highly suggest that you do so because you're basically investing time, efforts, um, potentially funds without any money ever exchanging hands thing that I just, I don't advise ever. Okay, and then project management section, that's where everything happens, right? We're going through the day-to-day, -day, we're proposing, we're sourcing, we're tracking, we're basically orchestrating everything that's gonna happen on our uh, install day, okay? Or by piecemeal if you do it that way. Okay, and then, like I said, the project closeout for me is so important. I think it's one that gets glanced over, and I'm going to scroll down and just show you what mine is. So hopefully you've had a chance to screenshot that. If you haven't, go ahead and do so now. This is my project closeout phase. Again, 
Um, it's one that I've just kind of created and I'm just gonna walk through it and then I'm gonna dive right into studio to kind of show you what we're talking about here. Um, but if you have a chance to screenshot, please do so. Okay, the the main thing in my project close out, and I don't know how many of you um, have more than just yourself working, um, whether you pay commissions on that or, or what, but basically uh, my cue when <laughs> to start this project close out, because that's another thing, it's like, okay, well, when do we do this? Well, for me, it's usually an indication of a client wanting their refund or retainer fund, refund, or um, I have a designer that's antsy on returning the retainer or wanting to know, you know, what the final final outcome was. So it's usually really the indication, right? We're always the last to know if you're in the um, accounting portion of the business. So project review is gonna also be something, I'm gonna show you all the reports that we're gonna pull. The final invoicing is part of the project review because I expect every single item on your project to have full accounting. And I'll get into what I mean by that in just a minute. And then obviously the last one is the retainer refund, paying out commissions, giving out bonuses if anybody does that. But um, I don't do that uh, be until the very end, until I know all this stuff is done because um, that's the only thing that forces you, your team and anybody involved to stay on budget. Um, and it also ensures that things happen the way we originally anticipated or planned them out to be, right? We always have one way to look at things. And then as the day-to-day -day processes go, we, we, we know that a lot of things change in, in the course of day-to-day. -day. So that being said, I am going to just jump right into studio. Okay, um, here you're looking at uh, a project that uh, we built out. Um, and one of the things that I uh, do, okay, because you can see that for the most part, there are some things I, I, I know that these things need to be invoiced when we're ending a project. So typically before I start going in here and looking at item by item, I'm gonna go in here and pull some reports. Um, you'll see here that I filtered for just my saved reports. You can kind of make anything that you want as part of your uh, process, but I create these on everybody I, I work with. So if you're somebody on the call that I deal with, you probably have these within your studio already. Okay, and they are, if you have multiple logins, know that this report will only be on the, the login that you set up. Okay, because I get that a lot. I thought you set it up. Well, I did, it's on the login that I have. So if you have five logins, get the report parameters and just put them on the others, okay? So the first thing I am going to look at, and you'll see I label them. Let me back up. If you're looking at this, and these are the standard reports that come with Studio, um, I work with these project worksheets a lot, okay, guys? And what you want to be looking for is, um, for me, I'm very big on labeling and um, my labeling convention because anything that I know with the word client is, is probably going to be shareable with the client, okay? And um, I'm going to show you why that's so. Okay, because when you're doing something, and like I said, I always label my reports that say for client. If it says for client, you can share it. And that's because there is nothing in here that I don't want them to see. I mean, this one is an example. I, I labeled this to show you guys something <laughs> further down. But otherwise, it is just their pricing, their, their information, their room. I mean, I don't, if you want to hide the item number you can but really this is all they need to know i'd probably put some sections for the proposal and invoice number okay but what i do i already have my favorite report set up and it's right here um before i look at um what it looks like from our standpoint i want to see what it what what the client potentially may or may not uh oh okay and i'm going to pull this one up and I want to show it to you and it kind of shows the project in its entirety so it can be a lot of pages long if you have a big project this one is small for training purposes and what I like about it is 
it does have the proposal number. It does have the order number if you need it. And it also has the invoice number. And I'm just gonna tell you, at the end of a project, I like to see every single thing right here with an invoice number, okay? Um, especially if it has a uh, order number, okay? And I, I'll get into what this all means um, going forward. So if you need to screenshot this, um, please do so. Okay, um, now I'm gonna just, go down before I start to run profitability I want to make sure that the project is closed out closed out properly because it makes no sense um, to start reviewing something until it's final like a lot of things aren't even invoiced I don't know if the client really owes this this is a this balance here guys um, a client does not owe you anything until something is invoiced I, I want to make sure that that's clear a proposal is a non posting um, non-financial posting uh, transaction, meaning if you created 100 items today and you proposed 100 items, nothing happens to your financials, right? Okay, um, and then until you create an order, nothing is really happening here um, until you invoice. So let me, let me dive right in and show you. Okay, so here we are on a project. I know that we've paid the vendor, um, but you can see here that if I invoice this item out, the client's going to have a balance. Okay, and I'm going to just tell you what, what this is. Probably, most likely, when this kind of thing happens, it's because freight changes. We might have quoted a different freight. And, and I think that that's what happened because it looks like it's the freight plus some sales tax. Okay. Same with this. Um, there is a small balance um, because of probably a freight change or yeah it looks like just maybe freight went up by a little bit I try to estimate freight whenever possible or if the vendor does it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I actually do to close this out okay so we're gonna I'm gonna invoice this out and we're just gonna um, I do label it a certain way so let me just show you Okay, and I do label everything. I know some people are like, isn't that really redundant to name everything? I'll explain why. There's a rhyme and a reason for everything that I do within the system. Um, and I, I start to point them out to you. Um, if you've trained with me, you will know. Um, I could probably talk to you for eight or more hours on all this stuff. Um, but I can't do that all in one setting. It's just not, it's not, the best way for your, you to retain the info. Now, here, when we moved down, I, I purposely wanted to show you something that had multiple components, okay? This multiple component, you can see it's already been invoiced, but the client hasn't paid it or, or anything like that, okay? I wanted to show you this because I like to use my, my, I like to use first components in some cases, not all, but I, some people don't know how to use that or what that is. Okay, I'm about to show you. So this is a proposal. It's for wall covering. You'll see I have my wallpaper guy and I have my wallpaper person. I propose it to the client here. If I wanted to um, hide this, and I apologize if some of you already know this and it's boring, but I can, wait, let me back up. If you look at this proposal and it shows everything, you can, I hope, hopefully you guys can see that, um, but you can see that the, there is an amount, you can see the breakout, you can see the cost. Um, I don't know if I didn't put a price on that, but anyhow, oh, that's what it was. I wanted to show you why the, the wall covering had no price here, even though it had a price, right? So let me do the first component. So if somebody wants to remember that the total on this was three, Three thousand six twenty-two and eleven cents. When I do first component, I usually will do something like this. So now, I don't really need to let the client see everything. You can see that my pricing is the same. They get the gist of it. There, it the wall covering and everything they can still see, but they don't need to see the different breakdowns, especially, this is especially important when we're doing pillows, right? Like 
a pillow could have four components and I'm thinking like the fabricator or seamstress, the fabric uh, filled and trim, right? Maybe we don't want them to see all the, you know, that they're paying this much for a fill. You know, they're gonna want a cheaper pillow probably, right? I just wanna, I wanna propose the pillow itself as a whole. Okay, a lot of times if you show them too much, then they we get into a lot of sticky back and forth. So I do want to show that. And um, that being said, this is the proposal. Okay, you can send it from within the system. They don't have to see it all. Um, and I do have to click. These have been invoiced out, so I know that you know they can be paid. So I'm going to get into adjusting these afterwards. So here we get through rugs again. This is what I think happened. Freight came in at a higher amount. It wasn't the um, freight that we had quoted them on the proposal. So they, they did overpay by a little bit, okay? Um, and for those of you that are wondering why I always do, you know, do you always do the freight that way? Don't, you know, I know a lot of people have a lot of ways that they wanna deal with freight, but freight it is best handled at least in my opinion, um, the way that studio intended, you propose it. If anything changes from within the time that you 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 propose it, such as freight, like I said, I try to include it when I can, but it adjusts. So I like to make it actual and then I, I treat it accordingly and then it's reflected on the final invoice. Now, for those of you that are now wondering, well, doesn't that, what about when they overpay? What about, you know, that's true when they underpay, but what about when they overpay? Well, what I do, you guys, is I clean that up before I give them the final invoice, okay? And I will, we'll, we'll go through that, through this, okay? So the last thing I have to invoice here, and I can tell that I have to invoice, is the rug pad. Everything happened, we paid the vendors and, you know, maybe the client didn't pay for certain things or the money just wasn't allocated that way. So I am going to go ahead and um, invoice those out as well. I wanna show you that. And um, okay. And then the last things, I'm just gonna go scroll down to the ends of the project. Okay, now these are things that showed up on that report that they owed, if you remember. I don't know if it's still up. Yeah, so if you look down here in the living room, there's no client payments, but it's showing up here that they owe for these items. They don't really owe, like I said, because there's no invoice number, but it is showing up on the report at a close. You can see that they're red, so that, mean, they, that means to me, and the, just so you guys know, these internal colors, they're for anything you want them to be. So, you know, without talking or having to go through meetings or whatever, you can usually put statuses on things like that. So I know that these aren't a go. I think that we're, I just happen to know, we're gonna go ahead and pick up the project um, after the first of the year. I might make that a different project, I don't know yet. So at this point, I want to get it off of my project closeout reports so my designer and everybody involved knows that, you know, I, I did review it and it's not part of those numbers. So I might do something like this. Um, uh, project, project closeout um, and made. Okay, I might do something like that. And I would just cut and paste this and I would um, make it an active. And the only reason why I'm saying you can make it an active, you guys, is because there's no accounting on it. And I'm, I'm gonna show you, let me filter for living room so I'm not scrolling all the time. Um, yeah, I, I know, I just happen to know that these are that's what's going on. There's no accounting on them. You do not ever want to leave anything at the end of a project with half accounting, meaning there should be no vendor money if it wasn't a go, or there should be no client money, okay? If there is, then you, you just need to address that before you close it out. If you forgot and just left the monies here, let's say you paid the vendor um, 100 bucks on this, 
and you left it and you thought, oh, it's not a go, it's red, let me just make it inactive. This amount that you paid will live in vendor deposits forever until you address it. Okay, and for those are wonder, who are wondering what I mean by that, I'm going to dive in on, on this whole vendor client deposit situation so it's very clear. Okay, do you think that's something I didn't go through the last time that I will cover here? Okay, so what I'm going to do on the rest of these last two items, I purposely wanted to show you that. Um, so I'm just going to put it in here. I, like I said, I've already checked that there is no accounting on it, so I know that it's good clean it up so that I can run that project, um, close out profitability and all that. I do that because I save it in the file. That way, in the in the event that I have to discuss this uh, project with anybody, I already have it. I know what we made on that project. I don't need to get into Studio. It's, it lives in my Dropbox or your Google Drive or wherever um, you conduct business. So. I save it. I also like to kind of compare, be able to compare it to something else if I need to. So this is the project as it stands, and I'm going to run that same report. Um, yeah, I'll run this same report. Let me... And you'll see that I switched clients just because I want to make sure that it refreshes. I don't like to refresh from here. I usually will refresh from within Studio. Okay, and now when I do that, and I will open it so you guys can see it. Um, now when I look at that, um, you can see that it all has invoices. Some are or aren't paid and you can see, um, I do wanna show you before we move on this uh, wall covering. Okay, so these are the dollar amounts. This is what it says the client is owing, oddly. Um, so let me jump into that wall covering. Um, let's do wall covering. Okay, this is one that I get because um, a lot of you like to create so many different sales codes. I, I, that's fine. Um, I usually like to always question the sales codes um, because Studio does have very, um, very good, a good, a foundation of sales codes. When you're wanting to add certain sales codes, um, I usually want to know because I want to question it because a lot of times you don't need it. Some of the times we can tweak the ones that are already there. For some reason, you know, you'll, you'll never sell one thing or another. There's a way that we can do that. Okay, and, and I like to always make sure that we're, we're looking at that before people go in and erroneously just create a bunch of accounts and do you know different things okay so what you're looking at here is labor and do you see how i have nothing here um i could have done this item a number of different ways okay because it's the labor for the guy that's doing my wallpaper i could charge this as labor and i could have put it right here okay i could also use other other costs and in other costs i these are the typical standard ones if you feel that you need to add more. Again, I, I usually like to know what those are because I see a lot of people create these accounts. Studio is so customizable, which is an awesome thing, but um, if things aren't being set up properly, then, then you have the ability to also screw things up. And a lot of times, and, and I say this with the utmost respect because a lot of times, um, People call me, I do take a lot of troubleshoot calls and that's why I probably have a ton of tips and advice for everybody on things and the way I post and operate. It's because I take those troubleshoot calls and they swear that, oh, there's a problem, there's a studio glitch, there's no studio glitch. Um, it's your, the way that your processes are, are incorrect. So, the, you know, studio gets inundated with some of these things and I'm like, yeah, that's not a glitch. That's um, wrong accounting or, or an internal thing. So I, I do want to point that out. Um, so that being said, that's why, you know, it didn't show up on the proposal. I could have done that a number of different ways. Um, now that I've showed you that, I'm going to just take off my note. Okay, and that's what it is. Um, I see people wanting to call this uh, wall covering 
when it's the installer. Um, in most states, the install is an installation and repair labor isn't taxable. It's labor in general isn't always taxable in in most states. Okay, not all, but most. Okay, so there are different ways to, to call that and to, to deal with that. So I wouldn't really call this portion of it wall covering. This is wall covering. Okay, so if, if you have questions on that, I mean, you can reach out, but that's kind of where I was going with that. Okay, so um, be mindful when you're creating all these different accounts um, or make sure that you know what you're doing when, when doing so and that there are corresponding general ledger accounts and such, okay? Because I will see those create issues. Okay, now, um, having said that, hopefully I have not um, confused uh, you in this process. So I'm gonna go into Money In and just finish the cleanup. I wanna show you what that looks like um, from, the, from the Money In side. Um, when I'm cleaning a project up, you can see that I've received funds. Um, there are no proposal deposits because everything's kind of gone through and been invoiced. Um, I know that the retainer was $2,000, so I know that they're probably looking to be refunded on or about that amount, but you can see that there are things that they owe for. So before I get into refunding or talking about any of that, I might first want to know what it is. If I applied the funds, I mean, we they still owe us. It's not the 3,000 is insufficient to cover what they truly owe us, okay? So do you see that? I'm gonna make sure, I look at this constantly when I'm um, in money in. So I usually always know who pays what it needs to kind of make sense. So if I were to do that, okay, the first thing I would do in cleaning this up and I will move to apply, okay? When you're, maneuvering and money in you guys um i do want to make note if you are doing things please try not to override these a lot of times when you guys call me for troubleshooting or accounting problems i tr when i go to backtrack and look for things which is awesome in studio because it doesn't allow you guys to delete a lot of postings okay there's a reason for that it's for an audit trail you do not want anybody including me yourself or CPA, anybody, to just have the ability to just go into your books and just delete things, okay? So it makes a lot of sense. I love that Studio does not allow you to delete a lot of things. I understand for those of you that are in the accounting department, you don't want people to see your dirty laundry. I have ways to address that so you don't have to look at them every day, okay? Um, but uh, just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to go ahead and apply. And typically what I'm doing is I want to apply what makes sense. When I say what makes sense is I'm going to usually clean up the things like I know that these rug pad amounts can kind of clean each other up somewhat. And if I were just going to apply the portion, the overpaid portion of the rug, I know that this was from freight reducing. So if I wanted to apply that to this, you can see that they would still owe. So what I would do in that case, is I would I would do something like this, like apply um, client. And like I said, I leave the, the beginning portion because that's how I backtrack mistakes. So apply client um, payment. Um, I might even just change it to say over, over payment of Right on. And you can do prop or invoice. It doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'll just call it on the rug to rug pad. You, I use all this to make um, really good notes on what I'm doing so it makes sense. And I'm not going to apply it to the rug pad just yet because if I were to put 143.77 here, you wouldn't be able to post it. Studio does not let you post a zero. Okay, just so we're clear. So what's gonna happen when I post this, and I'm just pointing it out because I always like to know, I don't rely on software to give me the answer. I'm gonna know that this 143.77 should increase that. So sh this should be 3143.77 when I post this, okay? And if there's not, there's a problem. So there's that. I know that that's right. I technically should only be applying the 143.77, 
but in the case of a project closeout, I'm going to clean up everything I can. So usually those are going to be the little guys first, unless there's something that's really old. I usually go by, by date, and this is like the oldest invoice, so I will take that one for sure. Um, and then I usually try to go in order. Um, maybe I will leave some of it here. To Let's just see how close we get. Oh, it's over. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna just leave it like this and I will apply first this. So I'll do apply. Um, so that's usually what I will do. Um, how I'll type that and I'll just eat this up until it's gone. Now, if I paid everything off and there was still a balance, that's the amount that I know that I get to refund the client. So here's what's left. Um, I will probably take some of it here because I want to use that one up, it's little. And then that's the balance. Um, I'm gonna use, it makes more sense to me to apply it to probably to this to clean it up, but we can put some to this since it has nothing. So that's how I would clean it up. And then now you'll see, okay, well, what do we do with this? Well, this I'm gonna send to the client and basically ask for the balance because this is what they owe. And if they want to, you know, ask about it, we can do that. I basically say, you know, we, we don't have a, ref a retainer to refund you is how I look at it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this report one more time. Um, and now you can see that their balance now ties out to the invoice. I send them the invoice. Um, you can even send them this this project worksheet because, like I said, this one is for the client. This can be shared with the client. Okay. Hopefully, there's no questions. But that is that. I save this in the file. Um, I know that the invoice is open. For the items that are that are over and done with and fully accounted for, usually I take this time to go ahead and make them inactive. This is what I mean when I say the accounting is full on this. Okay, this means all the accounting is done. And this is what it should look like at the end of a project. Now, if I was cleaning this up and making things inactive, this amount with the open balance, I'm not making those inactive. I'm leaving them open until, well, one, this one, I have to pay the vendor. I, I know we paid the vendor, so I will post that. We just didn't do the bank, right? And then these ones, I would just go ahead and make inactive because they're done. Okay, there's really nothing open for this client. Um, the one thing that I did miss that I probably should have told you before I finalize the um, other thing, I always check if there is um, install day activity any final things, I don't know, running to home goods and things like that. And I also double check, and I didn't do it this time, but I always check if there's any activities to bill, right? So I, I would have done something like this. Uh, whoops, time billing. And you can see that there is time work, see? So I had to bill that. So technically they owe 2,000, they owe that, the what was left on the items and I, I should build this out and I and I will. I'll just do something like um, and then I'll just build that. So that technically before I sent the client the final statement, I would do this too. So there you go. That's the last time billing. So if we were to do that, they would show up on the AR report now and this is due. So going back to their account, um, I can change it. So this is what they owe, 2,044 and 78 cents, okay? So that is really my, my project closeout. Um, I do run the report. Now I can show it to you one more time, um, the profitability, because that's the one that we really didn't want to look at until we knew that things were final, and they are. So let's look at this, okay. Um, here's my report. I did wanna show you this. 
what you're looking at, I do include this on the bottom. It's not on a standard report. I put this there. I'm going to show you one last thing before we take questions. I'm going to let you ask me whatever it is you want based on what we saw. Um, what does client office expense mean, right? Funds available, I think, is explanatory. That's funds that they have on their account. If they had a retainer, that would be shown here throughout the project. You know that that's a retainer. Okay, anything that like our odds and ends from freight, that would show up. Anything that's in funds available would be right there. But what is the client office expense? Well, I'm about to show you because I think that's something that a lot of people miss too. So watch this. If I, I already kind of prepared something for you. So right here, I said, okay, well, install day, I bought pastries. I'm probably not charging to, that to the client. But if you have a bookkeeper, an admin, or maybe I'm not sure if you're going to charge it to the client or not, okay? I might do something like this. So this is on just on a money out. You can even do things like um, install day stuff, but I like to set up items whenever possible. This is just something on the fly. I'm going to show you this for two reasons. I'm not going to put a markup, and I will just say 5863, okay? So this... I'm just showing you this is who the client is. Putting something here just jobs it to the client. Putting something here puts an entry. It doesn't mean that you're gonna build the client. It just puts an entry in, okay? So go with me here for a second. I'm gonna post this. And now this is the transaction that I need because I need to reconcile my Amex, right? I know that we spent that. So I'm gonna save and close that. I am gonna post it, but I wanna show you what that report does, and I also wanna show you what that activity does. So um, now that we've done that, I'm gonna pull that same report up. And now you can see that there's 5863. It doesn't mean we're billing them. It means I know that, you know, I spent something, in the overhead or client off, office expenses just mean everything that's under the overhead, anything that's not a cost of goods, okay? Anything that you would have, regardless of if you had one client, 100 clients or no clients, right? So um, that's what that is. And um, I do wanna show you one more thing about that um, in the time billing. So here's where it has that entry. Okay, if I was getting ready to do the time billing, I would have saw that, but you can say, um, you could do something like uh, no charge per um, Jenny. Okay, so she doesn't want to bill the client. I'm not billing it out and I'm going to save and close it. So that's what that looks like. They shouldn't be billed for it. And then when I go to create that time entry, it's not going to charge the client right now it still is but it won't it's just when we get to go to do the time billing we'll we'll take care of that okay i just wanted to show you that that's how you post things doesn't mean if i decided i don't want to do that i could delete it like if the designer saw it and and thought oh why is she charging or even noting that i'm going to delete it and i don't want my client to see that it's done but at least it still got it. It it still you know had the person whoever doing is doing the bookkeeping. They did their due diligence by putting it in here for the designer to see whether they bill the client or not. It's up to them. But at least it's there. Okay. Um, those are really my main things of closing a project out. Um, I I won't pay any commissions. That's when I know what the true profitability is. It's not going to look like you know what we always pre-plan or at least we hope um, I did want to share a couple more handouts with you um, actually before I get into my monthly process I know we talked about you know vendor deposits client deposits and things like that I'm gonna brush over this really quick and then I'm gonna let us take some questions when you guys when I say that the proposals are non posting that means you can create a million proposals nothing happens okay when you accept money from a client, okay, I'm assuming that it's gonna go, hopefully you can see this, I'm assuming that it's gonna go into your checking account, 
right? A client pays you $1,000, you deposit it into your checking account. It goes into studio and it goes here. This is the offset, it goes to client deposits. That's it, see, it does have no, it doesn't have any bearing on your financials. Then you go to, you create a PO, you pay your vendor, I'm, let's just say you charge it on the Amex. You pay the vendor 500 bucks. That Amex charge is a vendor deposit. It does not go to your, your financials or your profit and loss. Okay, I need you guys to understand this so because we're getting into year end and this comes up all the time. So if you didn't invoice the client, this is where it stays. This is why I'm so obsessive about invoicing everything on a project, okay? So what happens when you invoice, what you don't see, Studio does it behind the scenes, you don't see it. You click invoice and this client deposit goes over here to sales income based on your uh, sales code, okay? Then this vendor deposit, when you click invoice, it goes down here based on the cost of sales account, based on the item setup, okay? Then the amount attributable to sales tax goes into sales tax, and that's what you would pay when you file your, your sales tax. Now, one of the things I wanna point out, I teach everybody I deal with, do not code things to any sales income account or cost of sales account. Don't do that. If you had to, for whatever reason, use the generic one. So they're like, like the cost of sales, this generic cost of sales, use that because then that's where we're gonna search. When I go to look at these, it's just not a matter of balancing checkbooks and, and things like that, you guys. When I look at this, I'm looking to make changes. I mean, at the end of the day, what you, what you take in and what you spend is what it is, right? But there's a different aspect in our industry because of project management. Otherwise, don't pay anybody and just balance your checkbook yourself, right? That's that's not how it goes. These are attributable to purchase orders. Purchase orders and those things that I said, AR, AP, client deposit and vendor deposits, none of those things um, are adjustable because they're tied to an item, an order, a client, and a vendor. So you do not want to be doing things in here. Otherwise, when we look at this, I'm looking, if, if I'm looking at custom art and you made $12,000, it costs you 7,500 to make that 12. That makes sense to me. But when you have people that just start coding things to anything that they want, you'll see that these numbers start to get really messed up. And I'm like, why is it off? When we go to look, I, I, you'll see that it's because people are just coding things. These are POs. So I think I, that needs to be clear. I will be done with that. Hopefully I didn't um, freak everybody out, but I'm Sarah, we're good on timing. I'm happy to answer as many questions as we can. Thanks, Marie. Yeah, we're we're good on time. This is a good time to stop to awesome. get questions answered. Um, so as a reminder for everyone on the call, do submit your questions in now and we'll get to as many questions for Marie as we can. We've got a few minutes left for today. So. Our first question comes in from Tanya and she is asking, can you change a proposal to become an invoice? Absolutely, well, uh, absolutely. I, I wanna make sure that anybody that's listening knows that um, propose, you don't have to invoice something that's on a proposal. So if I had, let, and I know that you guys all love to do this, you wanna put, 10 items on a proposal, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Propose 10 items, or you wanna call it, you know, everything in the foyer, fine. That does not have any impact or inclusion on what how you invoice it. So monies that are applied to an item follow the item. It has no bearing on proposal or invoice. However, anything that you take on or off an invoice, you, which you can do, does create entries that then need to be backdated, but yes, you, the, it has no bearing. You can turn turn a proposal. A proposal is just a proposal to the client to say, this is what we want to do. This is what it will cost you for us to do it. If they agree, they pay. We create an order. And at that point, that that's how it is until we invoice. When I invoice, it's to clean up the odds and ends that happen. This is final. When you invoice, that makes it final. You cannot 
keep going back in and changing things. And if you look, it doesn't give you the ability to because it's, when you invoice something, it's saying it's final. If you take anything off of an invoice thereafter, know you're messing with sales tax. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Marie. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, next question comes in from Melissa. How do you include time billing into a final invoice for purchases? So I think what she's asking is how do we, if I'm not mistaken, Melissa, how do we include time billing invoices with our item invoices? But maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Time billing is separate. Time billing is done through activities and it goes through time billing. Now, those of you that want to work around or say, I don't like that. I want my time billing on with this. You can, I don't like it, but you can create a time billing room and set up additional items the way you would item items. However, I like being able to filter um, in the activities and time billing. Um, I like, let's do it in here, activities. I like having the ability to um, put the little notes that, that nobody can see or even filter or search for them. So like, like this one, there was a problem. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that things were happening. And you can see prior designer that they didn't like. Um, you know, I, I think those are things that we would wanna know. If you know that they don't like, they hate blue, I mean, maybe you want that on everything, right? Whatever that is, I like it this way. But yeah, there are workarounds. And to answer the question, you cannot put time billing or activities on the same invoice as your items. And I hope that answers that. Great. So a second question from mm -hmm. Melissa, do reimbursables have to be entered into time billing to make them visible to the client? No, they do not. Um, they, you can create a, either a room that's called reimbursables. You can, there even is, for a lot of my people, I create a reimbursable code, but what you want to understand is a reimbursable means you are not putting any markup on it. Okay, a reimbursable is treated like, so if I went to Home Goods and I bought, a, bought you know, something that was, there, there, there is sales tax on it and you can't avoid that. Um, when you charge your client, your client is still responsible for charge, being charged the right sales tax unless you count it as a reimbursable. So what, what, what I'm getting at to, to, to explain that is if this said home, home goods and I bought this and home goods put it, like let's just say I bought it in a city that, that the sales tax was, I don't know, eight and a quarter. And then now I'm selling it here to my client whose sales tax is 10 and a quarter. They still, they, they would be responsible for that unless you're just treating it as a reimbursable. Sales taxes do, you know, by the end user. And that's another webinar topic, but uh, yeah, to make sure it's marked as a reimbursable. I, I, I'm strongly, uh, I'm a strong advocate on these sales codes because um, of sales tax. I, I I've seen and done a lot of sales tax audits, so I know what they look for. I have yet to lose one, but I see so many different ways sales tax is done. And it, yeah, it, Studio does it perfectly if you know the rules. All right, thanks, Marie. Our next question comes in from Fleur, and this has to do with um, moving payment around in the system. Mm -hmm. We had a case where we received payments from our client against a proposal. We had to change vendor. We had to change the vendor and sent them a deposit. How do you move the client's payment to the new item? Good question. So what I would do in a case like that, and remember how I said I personally don't like deleting anything. And if a client has paid money on something, like let's just say, let's let's take this rug. They paid money on this rug, like you said, and then. Um, maybe, I don't know, they didn't like it, so we picked another rug. I would then, I wouldn't just take this one and revamp it to the new rug. What I would do is, depending on if you're good in the system, I would clone it, but if, if you're not versed in that yet, I would make a new item, I would call it rug, I would do all of this, I would mark this as, um, let me just show you, I would mark it as, um, 
like original um original selection um but uh changed to a uh, new rug selection or something like that whatever whatever the case may be you could document it here i also take notes i might put it down here in the vendor description because i know that this isn't a go anymore this is more an internal note so what i would do then is if we didn't pay the vendor yet which one is it if, depending on if we paid the vendor yet or not um if we're talking about moving the client's money i would just move their money um from the money in screen onto the next item however in a case like this where it maybe it's already been invoiced or we've or we've paid the vendor i fully process it the way that i would a credit or anything else because i'm waiting for two things am i getting a refund from the vendor or am i moving this to um inventory or is it not even available and they just switched it we didn't it, we didn't even get a chance to order it we, we paid but it's not ordered and they changed their mind there's there's a lot of different things that happen there and i i tell everybody to address it exactly the way it happened so in this case like if it was invoiced already i would go back in here and i don't know for those of you that do or don't know this when you invoice something you have the ability to create what's called a credit invoice that credit invoice then becomes like how you would do a return and there, i'm very specific on returns because like i said i'm either wanting or waiting for vendor money i'm putting it to inventory to potentially propose and sell to somebody else or you know keep it for the office i don't know but I'm looking for fully processing it within the system. Otherwise, if it was just the client money, money in and remove the money. I just like to document it because what happens at the end of the project, especially on higher end ones, they they will say, well, I paid you for that. Are you sure you credited me? I don't see it. So you just wanna always cover your bases. And even if it takes you one or two more minutes at the beginning, because I know a lot of people like to just skip steps, I don't skip any steps because that's how you cover yourself. All right, great. So this one has to do with, this question has to do with money in, and this question is from Robin. Mm -hmm. With the design fee from our client, how to remove this money in money in, should this be entered as a miscellaneous money in and how to move it from another place? And are we talking about design fee that they design just- Design yeah. fee? design fee on an item or like design time like time billing maybe you can uh clarify that robin through the through the chat um she said just a simple fee mm. well for me the simple fee always is correlated to an item so it would be on the item if we're talking more in terms of like i, I don't know more, more like a, a vendor commission than a Design design fee is usually tied tied to an item or time billing for me, and maybe right. I'm missing something. No, I I agree with that. Okay. Um, but are are we saying it's vendor commission then, guys? Um, so she's saying no item. I believe she's saying fee through time billing is my assumption. Um. I, me personally, I always like to invoice it in the system, even when I sometimes will take calls from people that I don't normally work with, but then they'll have a bunch of like little odds and ends. Like when you pull a client deposit report, people go, oh, are you kidding? They don't know that, and I, I will recommend that to all of you on this call, pull a client deposit report and run through that. Look at what's in the second column to the right, which is called, the, it's the funds available. And anything that's in there are odds and ends from the project. Anything that's negative in that amount means you over applied something, okay? That being said, um, I would always, I, I take from there and apply it from here. And, and if you had to reclass it, Oh, I don't like to show this, but you could, you could without invoicing it by, uh, I'm just going to do it. I don't recommend it ever, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, and if it had $15 right there and I just said, I'm not going to refund them $15. They were awful. Um, I might do something like this. Um, receive client payment. Um, and remember I said, I always like you guys to leave that. So I would put just free class um, remaining 
I'm going to fail to um, close out my time billing. This isn't right, you guys, but I have seen this is what people have done, and they will just do um, income time billing. That would take whatever was left. Like, so if, if there was $15 and I put a negative, that's going to basically take it from client deposits, which is sitting here and throw it into income time billing. So your income time billing just went up by that amount. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope so for Robin. Okay. If not, um, we, we can do a follow-up after. Okay. Um, okay. So Heather's asking, how do we get to the two project closeout reports that you mentioned? And so Marie's gonna show you now, um, try and take a screenshot. You can also refer back yeah. to this recording. Uh, the webinar yeah. will be recorded for everyone to access as well. So these are custom okay. reports. So when I specify data, anytime you guys ever want to know, even on my other webinars, if you left a comment, because I do have a YouTube channel and I have my website, if you left a comment and said, Marie, just is there any way you can send me the report parameters for such and such, I will. I would just screenshot this. This is what I did to get that. Okay, right. um, I'm going to move to the other one. So I do have a screenshot. I may or may not have sent it to Sarah, but I will. Um, but please try to avoid reaching out to her because last time was a lot. Um, this is the other one. I just want to make sure that that was right. And here's the report parameters for that. Great. Okay. Um, Anything else? I, I, I really appreciate, I know we're, we're running out of time. I, I appreciate you all for taking time out of your schedule uh, to, to learn about this. I'm excited that it's a three-part series. Um, my next one is gonna be a, a really good one. It's a, gonna be on the annual financial review process. Like how do you know when it's ready to send it to CPA? What are things you can look for? Um, before that, um, and you know, answer some of the questions that you all have when you first pull that uh, financial statement out. What you know, whether it means a lot to you or not. But I will cover that all, and hopefully, have enough time for Q and A again. But thank you again, and I will let Sarah kind of close that out. Great. Thank you so much, Marie. And we did try to get to as many questions today on air. Um, here, if you need to follow up with Marie and her team, here's her contact information. So her email is listed, marie at marievaton.com, and she does have her website, marievaton.com. And as always, you can reach the internal support team, support at studiodesigner.com. You can chat with the support team and schedule non-billable 15-minute calls. Thank you again, Marie. Okay. Thank, thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you. Um, for always being the best support for me in doing this. Um, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks everyone for joining. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.